Okay, let's get started then. We're going to begin with a couple basic definitions. If you don't totally understand by the time you're done, don't worry about it. Again, we're going to learn A is for apple. Even though you don't know what an A is and you don't know what an apple is, by the end of the course, it should all fit together and make sense. So let's start with assets. Assets are things, the technical definition is, they're things with probable future economic benefits. An easier way to think about it is they're often things, things you can touch like a car or cash or a house. So tangible things are the easiest ones to visualize. Another way to think about it is it's things in your company that have value. So things that somebody else would give you money for would be assets. So things like cash, buildings, furniture, uh, those are the most straightforward ones. But it also includes IOUs from your customers. We call those receivables because if a customer owes you $100, you could sell that IOU to someone else and let them collect it. So those have value to you and those are assets. Liabilities. Those are the opposite. Those are things with probable future economic sacrifices meaning you'll have to give up something in the future. Usually that's cash, but it could be that you have to mow somebody's lawn or provide some services in the future. So again, that's what your company owes to others. Um, for most of this first part, we'll assume what we're owing is cash. The nice thing about this is very often the word debt or payable is in the title, so it makes it a little bit easier. The third definition is stockholders' equity, and that's just what's left over. If you think about your assets, the things you have in, of value, less the liabilities of what you owe others, the remaining is what the owners really own. So, for example, if you bought a car and got a car loan, the car is your asset, the bank owns a part of it, but you have paid off some of the car, and that amount that's uh, been paid off is the portion that you own. The nice thing about stockholders' equity is there's really only three accounts that fit in there, and so, again, you don't really need to understand totally what they are. Uh, if you just want to memorize these three accounts. The first one is common stock, and those are contributions made by the owners. So when you buy stock, you become an owner of the company. So these increase stockholders' equity. Dividends is the next one. Those are withdrawals of cash by the owners, so we're taking money out of the company so we can buy Christmas presents or do something else as the owner of the company. Um, those reduce stockholders' equity. It reduces the value of the, uh, the firm as a whole. And the last one is retained earnings, and that's where you store or accumulate all the company's profits over a the company's lifetime. So as a company makes money, the size of the company grows, and that's all shown in retained earnings. Put all that together, and we have the accounting equation. The accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Remember, we said stockholders' equity was the leftovers. This just rearranges that uh, equation a little bit since assets is, should be the biggest number um, because hopefully we have more things of value than we owe other people. So that's the accounting equation. At this point, you don't need to think about it very much, but we'll come back to that later um, in our exercises. 
So let's get started. Just go to the first assignment, work through it. Hopefully you can guess at the first um, few exercises and as you get going through more and more of them, you're doing less guessing and more knowing what those answers should be.